Hello everyone. Today we're going to talk about multiple inheritance. Multiple inheritance is where a class is directly derived from more than one base classes. People have different opinions with the multiple inheritance. Some people say if single inheritance is good, then multiple inheritance must be better. And some people say multiple inheritance brings too much troubles and subtleties, and it, the benefits is simply not worth the trouble. In today's video, I'm going to show you all the benefits and uh, um, subtleties with multiple inheritance. And in the end, I will lay out my position on this, and you decide for your own position. Let's look at the example. We have a class input file which opens a file to read. So it has a public read function. We have an output file class. It opens a file to write. And of course, it has a write function. And later on, it turns out I need to open a file for both reading and writing. Then it makes sense that we create another class called IO file, which inherits both input file and output file. And as a result, the IO file can do both reading and writing. So far so good. Multiple inheritance has served its purpose. Now, in order to read a file, we must open the file first. So the input file needs another function called open. And for the same reason, the output file also need a function open. Now in the main function, I create an IO file f, and I call f.open. This code will not compile, because the IO file has two instances of the open function. One open is inherited from input file, and another open is inherited from the output file. So the compiler will issue an error saying, I don't know which open you want to call. And what's even worse is, if the input file has a private open function, now the IO file has access to only one function of open. So the f.open should invoke the output file's open function, right? No, this code still will not compile. The C++ standard says, before the compiler sees the accessibility of a function, it must decide which function is the best match for the function call. So before the compiler see that this, op this open function is private, it must first determine which open function should be invoked. That is why the compiler will still issue an error saying ambiguous call to the open function. To open the file successfully, you have to say f dot output file comma comma open. That will specifically tell the compiler that you want to use the output file's open function to open the file. Now you've seen one subtlety with the, uh, multiple inheritance. And let's see more. Since both input file and output file have the open function, it makes sense for the input file and output file to have a common base class and move the open function to that common base class. And that is what we are going to do. We have a file class, and the file have a name of string and also the open function. And both input file and output file are derived from file, and IO file is derived from um, both input and output file. Now in the main function, if I call the IO file's open function, it should be OK, right? Because we only have one open function available. The answer is no. The compiler will still issue an error saying ambiguous call to open. The reason is the input file will inherit an instance of open function. And the output file also inherited an instance of the open function. So the IO file 
still ends up having two instances of open function. One from the input file, one from the output file. That is why the compiler will issue an error saying ambiguous call to the open function. This is uh, commonly known as a diamond shade problem because the classes forms a diamond shape of hierarchy. The IO file not only has two instances of open function, it also has two instances of name. And I can assign different value to the two names. For example, I can do f dot input file comma comma name equal to file one and f dot output file comma comma name equal to file two. So this is a problem. Why do we need two instances of open and two instances of name? How to fix this? C++ provides a solution called virtual inheritance. I can virtually inherit the input file from the file and virtually inherit output file from file. What that means is we are telling the compiler we only need one instance of the name and one instance of open function during the process of inheritance. And as a result, these two lines of code will not compile. And the f.open will compile successfully. OK, the virtual base class is good. It solves our problem. However, it introduces another problem. It's a problem about initialization. Suppose we have defined a constructor for file which takes a string parameter of file name. Since we have defined a non-default constructor for file, the compiler will not generate a default constructor for us, which means all the file's children have to explicitly initialize the file in their constructors. And the IO file will initialize both output file and input file. This will work out OK if it is a single inheritance. When I create a IO file f, IO file will initialize the output file, which in turn initialize a file. However, this is a problem for multiple inheritance. When IO file is derived from both input file and output file, it needs to initialize both input file and output file, which in turn initialize two instances of file. That is bad. And C++ provides a solution by defining a rule. The rule states that the initialization of the base virtual class is the responsibility of the most derived class. In our case, the most derived class is the IO file. So IO file, in addition to initializing its direct parents, it also needs to initialize the base virtual class, the file. And uh, these two instances of initialization are simply ignored. This is a kind of awkward and non-intuitive, but we have to live with it if we want to use multiple inheritance. And this rule applies no matter how far the IO file is from the file in the hierarchy. As long as the IO file is the most derived class, it always bears the responsibility of initializing the virtual base class. So, if the multiple inheritance is so difficult to use, why do we have to use it? The answer to that is interface segregation principle. The interface segregation principle states that if an interface is too large, then split the interface into smaller and more specific ones so that the clients will only need to know about the methods that are of interest to them. 
Say I want to write a program to model a person called Andy. Andy is a very complicated person. He can do a lot of things. He can provide a lot of services. So to completely model Andy, I might end up having a class that has 500 APIs. This will make Andy a very difficult person to deal with. He has 500 APIs. How am I supposed to talk to him? It turns out it doesn't have to be that difficult. Andy is also an engineer. The engineer class provides all the services that an engineer can provide, which is a much smaller number of API, say, 40 APIs. Now, Andy is an engineer, so we can publicly derive from engineer. And uh, I'm a co-worker of uh, Andy, so in order to have a happy time co-working with Andy, I only need to know about Andy's engineer APIs. I don't necessarily need to know about any other things that Andy does. In other words, I only want to instantiate Andy as an engineer and talk to him through his engineer interface. However, from Andy's parents' point of view, Andy is also a son. And they want to instantiate Andy as a son and talk to him through his son's interface which is, let's say, 50 APIs. And Andy is also derived from Sun class. And this list can go on and on as Andy plays different roles in his life. So as you see, by applying interface segregation principle, we are making Andy a much easier person to deal with because each Andy's client only have a smaller and more specific interface to know about in, in order to talk to Andy. So in our daily programming, if you end up having a class that has a large number of APIs and the class is servicing different group of clients, maybe it is time for you to use interface segregation principle. And when using interface segregation principle, the multiple inheritance has an essential, essential role to play. Now you understand the importance of multiple inheritance. The question is, how can we use multiple inheritance without getting into all the troubles that we talked about in previous examples? To answer that question, let me introduce a new concept. It's called pure abstract class. C++ standard provides the concept of abstract class. An abstract class is a class that has one or more pure virtual functions. A pure abstract class is a class that contains only pure virtual functions. It has no data, it has no concrete functions. And here is an example of a pure abstract classes. In a nutshell, a pure abstract class is a class that has no implementation. It only provides an interface and provides zero implementation. And it turns out all the problems that we've talked about, the duplication of data, duplication of the functions, the initialization problems, all the problems will be gone if we only derive from pure abstract classes. If all the base classes, input file, output file, and file, are pure abstract classes that has no implementation, then there's no such problem as duplicated implementation and initialization, because there is nothing to duplicate and nothing to initialize anyway. And we don't even need the virtual inheritance anymore. So all the problems are gone, but we still have the benefits of interfa interface segregation principle. 
because the interface segregation principle cares nothing about the implementation. It only cares about the interface. It will work out perfectly fine if engineer and son are pure abstract classes. Summary Number 1. Multiple inheritance is an important technique to have. One example of it is the interface segregation principle. Number 2. If you are using multiple inheritance, it is strongly recommended that you only derive from pure abstract classes. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.